Hi everyone. So today's story is the last, that is the twentieth story of the Toy Story series. So I hope you are enjoying the stories, you are making the toys, and having fun with science at home. So I am going to start today's story with a number. The number is one seven two nine, one thousand seven hundred and twenty nine. In a mathematical circle, this is a very famous number. So the story goes as: Jeffrey Hardy, a mathematician at the Cambridge University, once visited Ramanujan. He came in a taxi, and Ramanujan was standing in the window, and he saw Hardy coming, and he went and welcomed him. To start with small talks here and there, Ramanujan said. The taxi number that you came in was quite interesting, right? It was one seven two nine. Did you see? Had he got to think anything about the number and apologized to Ramanujan, saying one seven two nine? It seems a very ordinary number, isn't it? Ramanujan said, "No, it is a very interesting number. Do you know why?" It is because it is the smallest number that can be represented as the sum of two cubes in two different ways. That is, one seven two nine can be written as the sum of cube of two numbers. Twelve cube plus one cube. That is, one seven two eight. That is, twelve cube plus one cube. That is one. That is one seven two nine, and also one seven two nine can be written as ten cube. That is one thousand and nine cube. That is seven two nine. That is one seven two nine. Isn't it interesting? And he also came up with the thought that it is the smallest number. So can you imagine? He checked all the numbers below that to know that that is the smallest number, which can be written. As the sum of cube of any two numbers in two ways, so it is so interesting and so difficult to come up like that, just like that in the mind. And so now these sorts of numbers are known as taxi cab numbers for this reason. So Jeffrey Hardy told the story, and I think people, all the people, tell this story to show how brilliant Ramanujan was. So let's know more about this Ramanujan. So Sri Nivas Ramanujan, as his uh, full name goes as Sri Nivas Ramanujan, was born on twenty second December eighteen eighty seven in Irod, India's small village in southern part. Shortly after his birth, his family moved to Kumbakonam, where his father worked as a clerk in a cloth shop. Ramanujan was a child prodigy. What does that mean? That means he was brilliant. He was extraordinarily brilliant only at the age of eight or ten. The greatest thing about him was probably that he turned out to be such an amazing mathematician despite having a very little or probably no formal education, absolutely in advanced mathematics. He was a self-taught genius. That is self-study. He used to self-teach him. He was his own teacher. Interesting, right? He came from a very humble origin, completely disconnected from the outer world, and he excelled in mathematics. Oh, so this is how Ramanujan. Possessed an incredibly amazing intuition of numbers. So he was his own teacher, and he has an intuition of he had an intuition of numbers, fractions, and infinite series. Possibly like no other mathematician did. So what is what does this mean? Is he did not have a formal education, so he did not know what other world, the whole world, was doing in mathematics. Or what the other world was proving theorems about. So he did his own theorems, which were already proved maybe. But in his childhood, 
he derived them on his own and this is how he was his own teacher ramanujan attended the local government school and high school but only at the age of 15 he started studying thousands of theorems of applied mathematics so at the age of 15 no school or no teacher teaches you applied mathematics theorems right so in this way he was his own teacher of mathematics he formulated many of his own and own theorems only at the age of 15 and 16 the strength of his work was such that he obtained a scholarship to the government college of kumbakonam and in 1911 he published a paper on bernoulli's number when he was 17 years old and it was published in a great journal of indian mathematical society so his paper on this numbers bernoulli numbers was recognized by the whole country when he was 17 years old so seeking the help of these society members in 1912 ramanujan secured a post in as a shipping clerk on madras port and he started was able to start his living he built his reputation in the mathematical society too he had proven many things and he sent all these proofs to cambridge university a lot of cambridge uh, mathematicians just ignored it but one cambridge mathematician that is jeffrey hardy the one in our story recognized something in it hari invited ramanujan to england and started working with him can you imagine at that time a uh, just a boy went to england at such small age when there was world war 1 and our country was not even free this is such a big challenge in his life <clears throat> so ramanujan was now famous as a mathematician even there but unfortunately the english weather and the english food did not agree with ramanujan and this is around world war 1 where england was all rattling it was very wet it was rainy and so cold that ramanujan fell ill he returned to madras but he also did lot of research before this he stayed there did lot of research with hardy and so now we have so many theorems and so many proofs and so many magical things with numbers which are named after ramanujan so when he came back to madras he was ill and to forget the agony and pain he had he continued to play with numbers even on his deathbed so what can we learn from this story even if we could not have a formal training in something we can start learning it on our own so it is not like we i don't have books to learn i don't have this to learn my teacher didn't teach me this so this cannot work you can start learning it on your own and start exploring the field on your own <clears throat> even if the world also doesn't know about something and cannot teach you something you can start learning on its own on the second hand even if the world knows about it and if you find it on your own the joy and happiness behind that will be extraordinary this leads to more curiosity and willingness to find new answers to new questions i hope you all have loved the story and now let's start with the toy so let's start with today's toy it is a mathematical one you all must have guessed it till now uh, so it is not only a mathematical game uh, but it is also a tic tac toe so you must have, you all Uh, we must be familiar with tic tac toe, or we call it X's and O's. 
uh, where we have a grid of nine on one paper and then you place a O here, X here and again a O here and you try to make your own line that is if you, oh, all O's are here you win or all O's are here you win or here and you win. So today's game is also mathematical and it's a tic-tac-toe. So I'll tell you how to make it and then I will play it. Okay, so let's start. So we need a paper, a square that is important and a grid of 9 uh, as usual as you play tic-tac-toe. Then you need some chits of paper, not some, precisely 9 and then you mark numbers on them. So 1 to 9. Seven, eight and nine. So just fan out your numbers. And now how to play this? So if if I start, okay, if I start with suppose eight, okay, then someone else picks up, picks up the seven. Then I take maybe two. Okay. Then someone will pick up maybe 4. Now, you see what is the addition. 8 plus 2 is 10. And then I have to pick up a number from the remaining one. So that I also complete my tic-tac-toe line. And I also get a sum of 15. 8 plus 2 is 10. Plus 5 is 15. Okay, I'll show you one more. Maybe I pick up 9. Then 1. Now what is remaining? 5. My tic-tac-toe is completed. And my magic square line is also completed. So the magic square is that you will arrange all the numbers in this square. Such that the addition of the horizontal lines, the vertical lines... And also the diagonal lines become 15. Okay. So there are two games that you can play here. One is the tic-tac-toe. When you complete your line with someone else playing with you. Maybe like this. So this person has not completed his tic-tac-toe. You have with a sum of 50. If you've done this, then he also doesn't win. Win, you also don't win. But if you have done this, that person doesn't win. But you win because you've completed your tic-tac-toe and your sum of 15. And the second game is you can play together. Both of you can play together. And you arrange all these numbers such that the horizontal, vertical and diagonal lines, the addition becomes 15. Did you understand? I hope this is a fun game and you all will love playing this game. And this is also addition game. We have learned the addition game in the board game. But those were a little smaller numbers and they did not include any tricks. But this game include tricks. One more very important thing while playing this tic-tac-toe is, maybe not an important thing, it's a rule about this game. That is... You cannot place a 5 at the center. You cannot start with this. That is the only, only rule of this tic-tac-toe. And you only will figure it out why this is a rule. Okay, when you start playing with the magic square and the tic-tac-toe, you yourself will figure out why I, we have made this rule for this game. Okay. So these magic squares, for these magic squares, Ramanujan was the first modern mathematician who could build this magic squares. This is a 3 by 3 magic square. He could build more powered magic square, 5, n, any number of magic squares. And he could also give all the proofs of these magic squares. Isn't this interesting? If you're not understanding what I'm saying, 
you will definitely find this interesting when you grow up just remember the story and just remember my words and when you grow up this will be a fascinating thing to play with you can make this uh, game more easier just draw a 3 by 3 square on a sheet and just start writing numbers that is the more easy version and this is the more fun version i hope you all have loved the series the toys and here i actually complete the series of 20 stories and 20 toys or games i hope you all have loved the series and this is not the end of me meeting you definitely i will come up with more interesting things for you but till till for this series of toy story series we have completed the series so i was going through all the series and toys yesterday and i found out that i have not introduced myself yet but today i will do it my name is shivani and i am working in ayuka and we develop such toys and games to make science fun for all the kids i hope you have enjoyed the series watch the series the series will be available any time for you on our youtube channel please subscribe our channel like share and subscribe bye i'll meet you next time